Hello, and welcome to the resistivity training module for HTCP. Here, you will learn about the resistivity procedure and other items related to resistivity testing. Resistivity is a material property that measures a material's ability to resist electrical current. Resistivity measurements can be made on concrete specimens. What resistivity measurements will tell us is how permeable concrete will be. This is an important parameter because it can tell us how easy it is for outside chemicals to infiltrate the concrete. A lot of outside chemicals can cause durability, durability issues in concrete, but if it has a low permeability, these chemicals won't cause too much harm. There are two means of measuring concrete resistivity. The method this module will be covering in detail is surface resistivity. This method utilizes a probe to measure the surface resistivity of concrete which then can be converted to resistivity. The other method is bulk resistivity. This will not be covered in detail, but it should be noted as another way to measure resistivity. This method uses two metallic plates, which are hooked up to an electrical source, which then an electrical current is driven through the sample. Measurements are recorded and then converted to resistivity. WizDOT is currently adopting surface resistivity to measure concrete's resistivity. This method, covered in AASHTO T358, utilizes a probe known as a Wenner probe. The probe WizDOT has adopted uses a 38 millimeter or one and a half inch probe spacing. You need to be cautious when purchasing because there are different probe spacings that are available in the market. The meter also needs to have the following specs as well. A measurement range between one to 1,000 kilo ohm centimeters and a measuring frequency between 10 to 1,000 Hertz. There is a different curing procedure for concrete specimens coming in from the field. Resistivity specimens will be utilizing an accelerated cure method. The method still uses lime water at similar concentrations, but at an elevated temperature. The temperature range for the tank needs to be between 97 to 103 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason we are adopting accelerated curing is to account for any supplementary cementitious materials like fly ash, slag, silica fume, or other uh, mineral admixtures. The heat from the accelerated cure, pr cure procedure will cause the reactions of the SCMs to accelerate, which then will help us determine the potential permeability of the concrete. More on this procedure will be covered later in the video. The one thing that needs to be made clear is that strength specimens are not to be cured in the accelerated cure tank. This is not an acceptable method for curing strength specimens. Also, Resistivity specimens cannot be used for strength acceptance. If you are using cylinders for strength acceptance, you must make three additional cylinders. Here are the materials that you are going to need to perform resistivity testing. You will need the Wonder Probe at 38 millimeter spacing. You also need a damp cloth to prevent the sample from drying out. You also need to obtain a non-conductive and not absorbent sample holder. This can be as simple as a rubber mat or a jig made out of non-absorbent or non-conductive materials. You will also need recording forms, one to verify the device is working properly and a way to record the surface resistivity measurements from the probe. The Wenner probe verification log needs to have the following minimum info. You need the device serial number, the owner of the said device, the technician name along with their HTCP certification number, a date the device was verified, and measurements from the verification process. You will also need the surface resistivity recording sheet. There is a recording sheet available on the DOT website and it is called DT2230. Now let's move on to the procedure. First, strip the cylinders out of the molds to work to mark them. In this video, a stencil was used to mark the sides of the cylinder. It is recommended to use a stencil so marking the sides can be done quickly and accurately. Four markings need to be made at 90 degree intervals. The markings need to avoid large voids and other surface defects. The markings need to be centered on the cylinder and are as straight as possible. Lastly, the cylinder markings need to be labeled 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees.
Now take all the marked cylinders and place them in a standard lime water tank or moist room. These cylinders will remain in the standard cure environment for seven days. On the seventh day of curing, remove the set of cylinders from the standard cure tank and into the accelerated cure tank. Leave the samples in the accelerated cure tank until the 27th day of curing. The accelerated cure tank should have temperatures between 97 and 103 degrees Fahrenheit. On the 27th day of curing, remove the set of cylinders from the accelerated cure tank and into another standard cure tank to cool down. Resistivity measurements will be done on the 28th day. It is mandatory to have a separate cure tank for the samples to cool down. Heat from the samples can impact nearby samples or elevate the standard cure tank temperature too much. The first thing you should always do before testing is verify the probe is operating correctly. Certain models will have a tool, like the one being shown, to help verify the probe is working. The way this tool works is by pressing all four probes down on the gold plates. The top row will read at or close to 12 kilo ohm centimeters for 38 millimeter probes. The bottom row will read at or close to 90 kilo ohm centimeter for 38 millimeter probes. Record all verification values prior to testing. After verifying the probe, remove one cylinder from the set to be measured. All measurements are to be made on the 20th day of curing. Place the sample on a non-conductive and non-absorbent surface. Take a damp cloth and remove excess moisture from the surface. Wipe all surfaces of the cylinder until it reaches a saturated surface dry condition or SSD condition. The cylinder should have a semi-gloss sheen to it. The first method of measuring is called the rotation method. First, measure the surface temperature of the sample and record it. The reading should be between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The method currently being shown measures one marking and then rotates the sample to the next marking to be measured. Wait until the probe gives a stable reading on the marking. This rotation method is valid as long as each marking is measured twice. All markings need two measurements. It is important to record each measurement from the probe with its corresponding marking. Depending on ambient conditions, it is possible the sample will dry out. Keep a damp cloth on hand to maintain SSD conditions. The test should be complete in less than five minutes. The second method is called the double method. Instead of measuring once and rotating the sample to the next marking, the same marking is measured twice and then the sample is rotated to the next marking. This is a valid method as long as each marking is measured twice and recorded twice. Keep in mind you still need to measure the temperature of the sample prior to testing and you have five minutes to complete the test. Another thing to keep in mind is that you need to use the same method from one test to another. Repeat these steps for the other two samples in the set. In summary, resistivity is used to measure permeability in concrete. It is a very quick and easy test to perform. The curing procedure, however, is different from strength specimens. I want to reiterate, resistivity samples cannot be used for strength acceptance. Strength samples cannot be cured in the accelerated cure tank as well. The key takeaways I want you guys to take away from the video is follow the accelerated cure process outlined in the, bullet, uh, in the bullet points below. The other thing I want you guys to take away from it is that all cylinders must be measured at SSD conditions. The test on one specimen should be complete in five minutes and all cylinders must be measured the same way, whether it is with the rotation method or the double method. This completes this module of the CST program.